Uh, I'm Dave Willis, uh, co-creator of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And I'm Dana Snyder, not a co-creator of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. You're gonna break that thing. Shh, you're disturbing the present. Look, Shay, he needs complete silence so he can talk to the dead. Yeah, well, he needs lack of oxygen so he can become the dead. Dave, I'm thinking of someone, and I'm just gonna throw some names out. I want you to think who, who it is. Powerful, amazing, cuddly. Russell Crowe. Very close. Okay, try me. Uh, I'm thinking of the dude that is uh, that was in uh, the Psycho remake. Danny DeVito. Vigo Mortensen. Vigo Mortensen. <laughs> it was a movie that was a, took a long time to get together to make, you know, but it was. Uh, based on a play by C.P. Taylor that I saw 25 years before we made the movie, and I, I always thought it was a good story. Come on. There's a considerable difference between talking about something and actually doing it. Exactly. Men like you shouldn't be shut up in their studies reading books. They should be out there helping to build a better country for our children. <laughs> Most of the other movies, even the best ones, they hew to certain well-established conventions as far as so-called Nazi movies are concerned, you know. And this movie's a process of going down the wrong road, of making a series of decisions, of compromising as an individual, the character I play. It interests me to, to be in, in stories that are thought-provoking, you know. And life is short. What are you going to do? Look back at the end of your career and say, yeah, you know, I did make a lot of money, but I could have done some good stories. Dana, what segment are we? How oh, well I believe <laughs> we're about to do a segment involving Star Trek. How very I illogical. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. That's, oh, that's the other guy. Oh, yeah. oh wait, that's, that's not everybody. That's more. Hey, Nanu that's... Nanu. As someone who's not a fan of Trek originally, when they asked if I'd be interested in producing Star Trek, I thought, well, that's an interesting challenge. Like, how do I make a version of Star Trek that would appeal to me? I knew Kirk and Spock was the way I'd want to go. It, you know, we worked on it for about a year. When I just read the script, it was just, I realized, oh my God, this is huge, and it was intimate, and all these things I love. TV is hard because you've got to keep feeding this beast. Every week there's another show, and it's a lot of work to do. The upside is, if you're lucky, and it goes on, there's this wonderful organic sort of evolution. You end up sort of finding that the thing becomes something, you, you start listening to it as much as it's listening to you. It's, it's a very strange, it's almost like a Ouija board thing where it's like, you know, you don't quite know who's pushing what, but suddenly it's spelling something out. Gamora is an Italian film that was nominated for a Best Foreign Film Oscar. The title itself is a play on words, as Camorra means mafia in Italian. Now, if you've seen your Goodfellas or your Godfathers and you like those, you're in for a reality check with Gamora, as it tells five or so stories of different strands of mafia and leaves you heartbroken and brutalized as you realize how intense this whole organization is. I love this movie. I'm going to give it 15 bucks out of 15.50. Bravo, bravo. That's very good. Let's talk about Australian sellouts. <laughs> God, Craig or Jordan. They make seriously. They get their legs here, they work out their salad days, and then where do they go? Psst. Film a crime drama in Hollywood. Hollywood! Yeah. yeah. Ideally, I'd love to make all my films here in Australia. It's just that. Um, kind of a tricky environment. I live in Los Angeles, you know, really just for work. I just shot two films back to back actually, which was um, really grueling. The first one is um, called The Informers, which is based on a book by Brett Easton Ellis, and it's sort of a collection of short stories um, that all weave together, all set in Los Angeles in 1983. You can have everything. You can be anything. I need something, Mark. What else is there? You already have everything. There's something more than this. Anything but happy. And the second film is called Unthinkable, which is a thriller with Samuel L. Jackson and Michael Sheen and Carrie Ann Moss. My name is Yusuf Atta Muhammad. I have placed 
Three bombs. Um, and we're just in post-production on that one at the moment. You want to know where the bombs are? I chose to meet my oppressors. No time! Hey, hey, footy boy, did you, um, did you just see Fast and the Furious? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what do you reckon? <laughs> what did you like about it? Paul Walker and Fast Cars gave me hard. Ben Diesel had awesome acting. Everyone hung shit on him for not being able to act, but he could act. What did you like? The red cars. Uh, what would you give it out of 15 bucks? 15. 15, definitely. 15.5. <laughs> 11. 12. Eleven and a half. Shit's over the watchman. <laughs> Go, dogs. From the beginning. She rocketed to fame on Neighbours and has had three hit pop albums. Now Natalie Imbruglia returns to Australia for her first leading role in a major film. Closed for Winter is the deeply moving story of the beautiful young Elise, played by Imbrules, who is haunted by her sister's tragic disappearance. Francis! Elise must face dark family secrets that have remained unspoken, and at last she finds the courage to begin to live in this haunting, deeply moving film. Thanks to Goalpost Pictures, the first 10 people to email will receive a double in season pass to this brilliant new Aussie film. Closed for Winter is in cinemas April 23.